Hey folks, it's Dave Burrows uh, with a short-term market update. Uh, as we mentioned last week, we thought we had seen the lows um, put in last Monday. Our short-term data was becoming very oversold. And we were starting to see some improvement. So after a wicked down month, uh, first of all, we saw the percent of stocks trading above their 50-day moving average turn higher. We then saw the percent of stocks trading above their 150-day moving average turn higher, both from extreme oversold territory at below 30%. Since then, the universe of optionable stocks, which is the most liquid universe uh, of equities in the US, uh, reversed up from 28% of stocks in uptrends, has moved up to 34, giving us an initial buy signal on US equities. That came on top of improvement in the S&P 500. Um, just to go a little bit further, NASDAQ 100 turned up last week, has continued to build on that. Bullish percent has now exceeded uh, the high that it put in at 40%. So breadth expanding for the NASDAQ. So the reality is the last market to break down was the strength and the first one to reverse shows continued leadership. Um, the, if you took all U.S. equity mutual funds uh, and create, calculated a bullish percent or the percent that are in long-term uptrends, it got to a low of 14%. That's the lowest it had been since the lows in the market in February of 2016. That reversed up at the end of last week. And in fact, beyond the U.S., breadth in Europe turned higher from 30% at the beginning part of this week after being negative since May. So short-term and long-term indicators for Europe now improving. Percent of stocks with positive weekly price momentum or upward trajectory has reversed from 26% to 40. Japan bullish percent has turned higher. I talked last week about Shanghai being as sold out as it's been uh, in the last number of years. In fact, breadth got as low as the US stock market did at the end of the US financial crisis. It hit 8% reversed last week and turned higher. Bullish percent for Latin America was the first group to turn higher. This was one of the tells that in fact we probably are not headed into an economic slowdown. Latin America largely driven by resource and commodity based companies. Those would not be doing well if we were headed into a slowdown. Uh, they continue to be strong all the way through the sell-off in the last month. And on the other hand, uh, bullish percent or breadth for fixed income which started weakening early in the year has continued that course and sitting now at 60%. So 58% of 58% of fixed income securities are in downtrends and uh, and are sorry in uptrends. Uh, that number is deteriorating, meaning breadth for fixed income is weakening. Money is leaving that group. Other key tells: copper continues to put in lower highs, uh, working its way higher. Very economically sensitive. Uh, and so if we put it all together, if you took all the major countries, all of those in green have turned positive. That's all happened over the last week from a very sold out level. The S&P 500 has had a bounce. The one thing I would say is there was a gap left on the chart uh, four days ago when the market gapped higher. Very possible that the market could pull back and fill that gap over the next couple of days. That is absolutely not a given. Uh, but very possible. I think it's also important that many of the ETFs we own in our macro strategy, as well as the major market indices in the US held the higher low from March. So we saw low in February, a rally attempt, we held a higher low in March, and virtually all of the various parts of the market that we're invested in have held above that low uh, and uh, now turning higher. So from a sector perspective, just quickly, groups that have turned higher, based on our breadth work. Technology would be number one, semiconductors, software, internet, and electronics companies. Again, the last group to break down was the first to reverse up. Joining technology has been consumer discretionary, obviously economically sensitive and tied to the US domestic consumer. That's apparel, that's fashion, restaurants, and home builders. In healthcare, the group that held up the best through the decline, biotech, pharma, Healthcare service providers and device makers or technology healthcare device companies have turned higher. And in the industrial space, aerospace and defense, machinery, autos, all have turned higher. And in finance, we've seen initial improvement in insurance. We're beginning to see improvement also in regional banks. 
Look, we are headed into the seasonally strongest period of the year. If you took every year from 1950 through 2018 and plotted what happened between October 31st and the end of April, cumulatively a $10,000 turned into just over a million. If you took the same years but just plotted from the beginning of April to the end of October, that $10,000 turned into just over $11,000. So clearly we are headed into the seasonally strongest period. Tomorrow is the election. We know the history on midterm election years is that in the 12 months following the election, since 1946, every midterm election year was positive for an average of 14%. So. Uh, all in all, things continue to improve, not to say there can't be a few more bumpy days, but my guess is we've seen the lows uh, and now the seasonality kicks in. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please don't hesitate to call us with questions.